Let's explore how to quickly make a quiz in Schoology. If you want to, you can use the Add Materials button and add a test or quiz just right on your course's homepage. Or if you don't want things to get too long and listy here, you can create folders to organize your content. I'm going to do that and then I'll pop into this folder. That Add Materials button will of course follow me. And then I'll choose Add Test or Quiz. Give your quiz a name. You can certainly use the quiz tool for items besides quizzes. I'm going to use it for a homework check. And if you want students to see a reminder about the upcoming quiz, give it a due date. If you want the quiz to be a surprise, then definitely do not assign a due date. Don't worry too much about the overall points right now. We'll come back to those. You do need to make sure that you have a category. If by some reason your category is set to ungraded, make sure you switch it to a gradable category or just create a new one right here on the spot. Before you click create, one last thing you might want to do is disable comments for your quiz. Unless you want students leaving comments about your quiz, I'm just going to disable that and choose create. This will bring me to the five panel editor that allows me to build my test questions and adjust the settings for the test and preview it. And eventually, after my students take it, this is where I'll see the results. If I left their comments on, this is where I'd see their comments. And again, their classmates can see the comments they leave as well. When you go to create a quiz, you can import an existing quiz from exam view and sometimes Microsoft Word. There are some extra steps involved in that, so see me if that applies to you. And you can pull questions in maybe from a question bank that you and your teammates or your colleagues are building. I'm going to keep this one just nice and easy and stick with the question types that are at the top of the window here. True, false, pretty obvious, multiple choice, and so on and so forth. So well, true, false is going to be just like multiple choice, but you only get two options. So I'll skip that one. Let's go into multiple choice and take a look at some of the things we can customize. This rich text editor is where you're going to build your question. You can adjust the font size, bold italicize, change colors, all that good stuff. You can even add in pictures using the insert content button. If you have the URL of the picture, you can add it directly from the web. Or if it's already saved to your computer, you can attach it. Being able to put in pictures is really a fast and efficient way if you already have an existing test, especially if it has equations in it or something you want to capture directly as it's printed. You can just take a screenshot of that. You can take a screenshot of the entire question and just insert it using this button. If you scroll down, this is where you can put in your answer choices. If you only need three choices, you can choose the Remove Blanks button. And if you need more than four choices, you can just add in additional choices. And when you hover over to the right of the Answer Blanks, you'll see a little pencil up here. This will bring up a rich text editor. So if you needed to provide answer choices in the form of images also, you can do that. You just click the little pencil, and you would have an Insert Content button here where you could insert screenshots or any type of image file to supplement the answer. You note the correct answer in this column. If there are more than two correct answers, you put a check mark by both of them. This question only has one right answer, so I'm going to uncheck that. And then down below the answer choices, you have some additional options. You can randomize the selection so that these answer choices are mixed up every time students see them. It is not a good idea if one of your answer choices, though, is all of the above. If you have more than one right answer noted, you have to decide if you want to give students partial credit. So if there were two right answers and the student got one of those, will you want them to get partial credit for the one they got right? If so, you put a check mark in this box. You can time the question if you want to. And then you assign the grading points down below. To wrap things up, just choose Create Question. This will drop you back to the question editor. You can see a snippet of the question, and you have a gear icon if you want to go back and edit that question. Before we preview what the test looks like, let's look at a couple of the other question options. We have an ordering question type here. This question type essentially asks students to put things in the correct order. This could be dates, steps in an argument, anything you want students to order. And what you will be doing is building the answer key. When Schoology gives this question to students, it will shuffle up these items. But as a teacher, you'll go in and you'll put the first item first. For this example, I'm going to use pictures instead of text. Mm -hmm. 
If you decide to allow partial credit for a sequencing question, Schoology will ask how many students need to get in a row to at least get a point. This one will be worth three points and they'll need to get at least two right in a row to earn a point. Everything looks good, so I will create this question. The next question type we can look at is short answer essay. This is the only one of the question types that is not auto scored. So if you choose to include a short answer essay question on your test, just know you will need to manually enter scores for only this question. This is the area where you're, you will write your question. You can decide if students have a character limit. And this is a maximum, not a minimum. You can decide if you want rich text answers for students. This allows them to have bold and italics and I believe a spell check on their toolbar. If you'd rather have students composing video or audio answers for you, you can choose this text box and they'll get a little microphone where they can record their answers to you. And of course, you can attach a rubric, which we'll look at in other videos. But if you want to score this answer with a rubric, you can create it here or attach one of your existing rubrics. I'm going to cancel this question type and move on to our next option, which is fill in the blank. When you're composing a fill in the blank question, it will not look right to you, but you just kind of have to trust the system. It will display a nice, lovely blank for students when they go to take the test. But for you, you're simply going to use an underscore to indicate a blank where students will be filling in a choice. For example, if I want a blank right here after this sentence where students will choose the word to fill in the blank, I'm going to hit a space here, and then I'm going to use the shift button and the dash key to create an underscore. Now, as soon as I do that, Schoology starts flashing, and this is where the answer blank is going to go, and I'm going to type in the right answer. Selfies. And then I'll put in a period. Now this little tiny blank does not look big enough for students to actually compose their responses. But not to worry, when they preview the test, it'll be a nice long blank. I can continue composing my paragraph, and anytime I add in another underscore, Schoology will put in another answer blank, and I can put in the correct answer. Now, if you want to, you can try to add in additional answers if you want to anticipate different ways students might spell selfies. Or if you don't want this to be a spelling test, you can opt to provide students a word bank. This will give them a bank of words that includes all of the correct answers and filler words, which are incorrect answers, that you can add. And then they'll just have to click on the answer choice instead of type it in. That way it's not a spelling test. You have some additional options. You can decide if you want students to get partial credit, which makes a lot of sense if they get one of my blanks right and not the other. I want them to get a point for that. Decide if the answers need to be case sensitive. This is a little bit irrelevant for me because I am giving them a word bank, so they're not going to be typing anyway. But if it were a spelling test and you wanted things to be capitalized, you can make it case sensitive. I'm going to choose create question and move on to the last question type, and then we will preview this test. So the other option that is left is a matching question. This is great for vocabulary, matching people and their descriptions. In this box here, you'll provide your directions. And similar to the sequencing question, you're going to build the answer key. So if you have Iron Man listed here, you're going to put iron, the answer for Iron Man or his power on this side. Both the question and the answer are rich text editable, so you can match a description and a picture of it, or you can match two pictures together if you wanted to. I'm going to build the answer key. And when Schoology offers this quiz to students, it will shuffle these so they're not in an order. If you want to make the question a little bit harder, you can add in filler words. These will be extra answers over on the right so that students are not doing a direct match. And nearly all the time, you will want to allow partial credit so that the students get points for the items they match correctly. And if mine has four questions, I'll typically make it worth four points. So those are the five different question types that you can build in Schoology. When you want to see what your quiz looks like, choose Preview. This is exactly what your students will see. They'll see a Begin Test Quiz button. And although I can work through all of these questions, and I can even answer them, I'm not going to be able to submit this test because I am in teacher mode. So there's question two. Those are all shuffled. I, would have to drag them in the correct order. Here is my fill in the blank one with the word pink here. I'll just click on the option. There's my matching question with my extra choices. When students match items up, 
Schoology draws a line so they know which ones they've already used. And again, I can't submit because I'm in teacher mode. So that's what the quiz looks like right now. Now this is a lot of scrolling, so one of the things I like to do for my quizzes is just put one question on each page. If you want to adjust overall settings for the quiz, you do that on the settings tab. Whenever you're in preview mode, you'll get this message whenever you try to exit preview mode. So if you want some overall instructions for your students to pop up before they get started, like you have 15 minutes for this test, you may or may not use a calculator, you can give overall directions here if you need to. This is really important to note. So all quizzes in Schoology default to being hidden. And this prevents students from accidentally or on purpose getting into your quiz and looking at it before you're ready to release it. So when you are ready for your students to access this quiz, you're going to have to change it from hidden to available. You can time release it, so you can have it open now until Friday, or you can set a start and end time, or you can just wait until your students sit down in class and make it available. Mine is more for a homework assignment, so I'm not even going to wait until they come to class. I'm just going to make it available right now. If they get into it early, that's fine. Mine's not going to have a time limit, but you can put a time limit on the test as a whole. If you do so, any of the time limits you, imp you imposed on individual questions will sort of be overridden and there will just be one general time limit for the test. You can set attempt limits, so if I want to, I can give everybody three tries, score by their highest, last, or average score. You can randomize the order of the questions, so students get them in a different order. And here's the one I like to adjust. I like to put one question on each page. Alternately, you can go back to your quiz and build in page breaks manually. That does take a little bit of time. It's much easier just to put one on a page unless for some reason you need two to appear on the same page. There's only a Spanish language keyboard right now which provides accents, and that's not going to be helpful for my test, so I'll leave the language keyboard off. Question review allows students to go backwards and forwards in a test. It essentially lets them skip questions. If you don't want them to go forwards and backwards, you leave it on no. If you want them to be able to go forward and back, choose yes. Resumable would let them start the test, exit, come back, and do it again, or continue where they left off. And you might want to do this for a two-day final, but if you do not want students coming into your test and then leaving the test to go look up answers, then you're leaving is no. So most of the time, mine are set to no. And viewing submissions allows students to see their test and the answers and what they got right or wrong after they submit it. So for a homework assignment, I might want them to see immediately um, the answers they selected and which were right or wrong. If this is a test I'm giving during the day, I'm going to leave this at no all day so that students in first block can't view their test and show students in later blocks what's on the quiz. So until everyone has taken my test, I'll probably leave view submissions as no. They'll still go to score. They'll be able to see, hey, you got 10 out of 12, but they won't be able to pull up the test questions and the answers they provided. So I leave it as no until everyone has taken the test. And then you can reveal it as yes, where they can see their test, which say what they got right and wrong, but not necessarily what the correct answer was if they missed it. That level is this one where they can see what they earned in terms of right and wrong, and if they missed a question, they'll be able to see what they should have said. Down here at the bottom refers to printing options should you need to print a test for a student. I don't need to, so I'm just going to choose Save Changes. That is what it looks like to create a test. I'm going to switch over to my daughter's account, and we'll see what it looks like for a student to take the test. So she's in my ELA demo section. Because I assigned a date for the quiz, it's right here on the right. She can click in here. Or she could go into the pop culture folder and access the homework assignment that is done using the quiz tool. So she's going to choose begin, test her quiz, and she'll see the questions. There are one per page. They are shuffled, so she will be able to click through these. We'll put in the right answers for her, and she'll be able to match everything up. Before Sadie submits, she does have to review all of her answers. She can go back and change any of those if she'd like to. Sometimes students forget to do this last submit at the end, and this confirms their submission. So Sadie can see right away she got 80 out of 100 because I left the quiz out of 100 points. So she sees her score right up here at the top, but she can't go back and see her submission yet because I have not enabled her to go back and see the questions she got right or wrong. If I switch back over to my teacher account and go into the results tab, I'll see now that I have some results for Sadie. 
So she took it one out of one tries. If I go in and view her attempts, I'll be able to see her entire quiz and how she did. From this screen here too, I can also unsubmit a test if a student needs to basically have a redo. It saves their answers but allows them to go in and change it. It's a little bit different than delete which completely wipes their test out and they have a complete fresh start with none of their prior answers saved. View edit's gonna bring up Sadie's test. So I can see the green ones she got right and the red items she got wrong. One of the ways I like to look at my data when I have a whole class full of students is to look at this view by question tab. Right now I only have one student, but if I go in and click see stats for question one, I can see that my one student, my class is really good with this answer. Everybody got 100%. But if I have 30 students, it'll give me the breakdown as to who, how many, the percentage who got it right, percentage who got it wrong. And this is nice when you click view responses, it pulls everyone's answer to question one and puts them together. So you don't have to look at all test questions. You can just pull everyone's answer to number one and view them side by side. Same thing with number two, I'd be able to view everyone's answer to question two to see if there's any common patterns for what they're missing. And I can identify a lot of that too, just in the stats right here. So these stats are question by question stats. You access them by view by question. And then over at the top, you also have some overall stats for the test. Your mean, median, and mode based on overall score. I only have one student. So this data isn't super rich right now. So that is how you create a test. Just go ahead and make like a really short five question test. Try out some of the different question types. See if you can work in maybe three of the five different question options. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to assign some rules to your quizzes so that based on a student's performance on a quiz, it will control whether or not they can access additional items in Schoology or unlock them.